Yeah, I get it, I understand, it's fine. It's totally understandable feeling an instant connection or attraction to someone or wanting the affection of a partner, I get it, I understand. I wonder what the uncertainty feels like, constantly walking the fine line of infatuation. We seem to give so much care and attention to perfect... My name is Koji Radical. I'm an artist, poet, art director. As soon as I started writing poetry and I started taking it seriously, there was um, an influx of artists that wanted me to like do feature spots. I knew I wanted to eventually do something for myself. I just needed the right project and the right inspiration. And I kind of found that within Dear Daisy. I've never found myself much of a party goer. She echoes compliments in my name despite the fact I hardly know Her core the colour yellow, whether sunshine or stain, who cares? Her petal shape in Leo's mane, or gust of glutted leaves and such Stuttered speech and awkward stares she And I did as he kind of acted as a stepping stone for me to kind of gain my confidence in making music in my opinion Dear Daisy was a concept book before it was music The music was as much a, a part of the storytelling as anything else Essentially, it was me trying to personify myself in a character and give that character a landscape in which all the things I'd necessarily be scared to talk about can come out and feel free. The news is fickle. People change. Life is strange that way. We ghost ourselves morning as we lay awake. <laughs> I think too far ahead. Got a guy called The Gardener. He makes a trip to the garden party in which he meets a woman called Daisy. He falls for her, but in falling for her, he kind of is forced to question all the things that make him so afraid of love and, and why he can't allow himself to be open. Eventually that grew and I, I managed to link up with producers that really um, understood what it was that I was trying to make. Linked up with Jay Prince and we made the garden party. That was a real organic session. I showed him the book and he knew the like, article. Right, cool. So really and truly, when you're listening to Dear Daisy, it's almost like that only having a few pages of a really big book, but knowing that in some way they all make sense, they all link together, but you're waiting for the rest of the story. And I think that's what makes it exciting. It's not like I've got like a long body of work, but that doesn't necessarily mean I can't make something timeless. I was told... Never marry a muse, meant many things, but probably to keep illusions intact. I mean, who likes the truth anyway? The only thing I've ever known to share forms with roses. Ramble, but keep it all to myself. Fish that swim shallow beg to be caught. Tangled in nets, thrown to water by the nose. Mind your own, company could be sweet. I've been known to cut ties, but real wise, no wise men still need advice sometimes. I wish talking to you was easier. The writer's curse is to never feel solitude if they can write words. The Garden Party is such a, a, a visual experience with the words and the, the music and the way it develops. The Garden Party is basically three songs. Then coming off the back of that, you've got Chase the Dragon. That song skips up to like 140 BPM. Like who's doing that with poetry? No one. I am. Because it's fun. Because I love making it and I love making the music. And making that song was one of the most exciting experiences ever. I've been performing since I was a kid. The one they call Koji Radical. Make some noise for Koji Radical, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you right. You're right. Poetry came the latest. I think the first time I performed poetry in front of a crowd, I was mad nervous. I didn't go for a phase where I was doing like conventional poetry stuff. I always wanted to be me. Like I know where my potential is. I know where I have the potential to go. When I premiered Bamboo on BBC One Extra, they told us that they had one of the biggest Twitter reactions they've had for a new generation shout. And for me, that's crazy. Like I'm a poet, do you know what I'm saying? It's crazy to hear poetry on the radio, for especially from someone that's so independent. I feel like now I have a little bit more leverage. I am not doing it for the glory. The glory is nice. The compliments, the the positive energy, I'm 100% grateful for. But that is not why I pick up the pen. At my age, it's exciting to be able to say I do these kind of things. I make poetry because 
it's a tool for me to communicate. I see all my art forms as a form of communication and in every facet that I choose to communicate in becomes another language. Karl Marx once said, religion is the sigh of the oppressed creature, the heart of a heartless world and the soul of soulless conditions. It is the opium of the people. But to Marx, I am, is it religion that is the opium of the people? Or love? Love has the same effects on the brain as taking cocaine. Money, greed, power. It is that rush of dopamine that fuels corruption. A longing need to want and have. So to Marx, I argue, is it religion that is the opium of the people? Or love! So poetry ultimately allows me to communicate ideas that I necessarily wouldn't be able to in just a picture. There is no other art form that can so quickly speak directly to parts of your mind and your heart and your soul that you were so willing to ignore before. And now I have the, the ability to, to speak directly to that place. My best music is yet to come. Can I speak? I've grown tired of being pushed into pits of passion because of my payment. It's a shame I can't play basketball. I can't do radio. I'm not a stereotype. <laughs>